Hey you guys, we are back once again, and today's video is going to be on how you can spot an INS bleh, ISFJ instantly. So first, as always, we're going to go over the uh, behavioral traits, and then we'll move into the um, the physical traits afterwards, so like their facial structure and stuff like that. So starting off, um, ISFJs, they are very caring individuals. Uh, they pride themselves on like traditional values. They're kind of like the housewife-esque type. Uh, regardless of whether or not they're male or female, they like to like take care of the things um, that make up a home. And so, for example, they, most ISFJs have hobbies like gardening, cooking, or baking, stuff, you know, that like takes place inside a household and like creates, you know, like this very warm, comfortable family dynamic, right? Uh, both men and women are very good at cooking uh, and most likely know a variety of dishes, which is pretty similar to an ESFJ in terms of values. So both ESFJ and ISFJ pride themselves on like taking care of a household just in like different ways. Um, ISFJs that I know, they place a high amount of priority on family. So basically, for them to get married and have kids is basically their passion in life. That is like, once I accomplish this, then it's like my life is complete. That is like the main uh, goal that an ISFJ seeks out is to basically form a family. Um, they also uh, have a high focus on material things like money because they do, they are like realistic because of the S in their name. So they know that like material things like money are needed in order to keep a household and family functioning and well. Uh, as you know, it is the driving factor in our society behind what allows a home to thrive and provide for the family, which is why the ISFJ will be kind of materialistic in that aspect because they know that it helps it to uh, further, their, further their goals, which is around family. Um, ISFJs are also very good at seeing fine details that are related to a person's actions, such as um, in terms of like human nature or emotions. So like they will notice if, let's say a waiter's hand is twitching, right? Which would imply they have some uh, weakness in their arm, maybe their tendons or their muscles, some kind of like, you know, injury or a very subtle way which someone walks, which means they have uh, a limp in their right leg, so then they'll be like, oh, there's a muscular imbalance in the right leg, so most likely an injury, or like from from like um, old age, or just some kind of disease, right? So they're very good at seeing these kind of like sub subtle details that others may uh, miss. Uh, this makes them very good at pointing out fallacies in a person's body language, but they may not actually realize that something's going on, even though they're even though they're aware of it. So, for example, they might say something, something like, "Did you notice that guy's eyes were shifty the entire time during the conversation?" Now, to some people, shifty eyes implies um, a lack of honesty, right? So this guy's lying because his eyes are like going like this when he's like talking to you. But ISFJs will not come to the conclusion that the person was being dishonest. To them, it's simply just an observation that doesn't have a deeper meaning, hence the, the S. Whereas an INFJ might notice the shifty eyes and be like, oh, this person is dishonest, because they have the N, they're able to like kind of more abstractly intuit uh, the intentions behind someone's actions, whereas an ISFJ will not be able to do that. They'll, they'll see someone's actions, but then they won't know the meaning why someone is acting the way they do. Uh, moving on to something deeper, which is very unique, I find to the ISFJ, is that they are good at putting on a fake face and hiding pain. Um, so then they'll like put on this fake smile, they won't really openly showcase their their pains, or their weaknesses, or the things that they're going through. So aka, they'll like, they'll pretend to be okay, and they'll be like cheerful, when in reality, internally, they may be feeling a lot of conflict, they may be going through hard times. And the uh, reason they do this is because they don't want the people around them to worry about them, right? They feel like making others worry about their own situation, like worry about what they're going through, it doesn't change the situation, right? So let's say an ISFJ is going through, I don't know, uh, financial issues, right? And so they're worried about where they're going to get their next paycheck from, how they're going to like provide for the family, household expenses, food, blah, 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 stuff like that. For it doesn't change their situation. So from their perspective, it doesn't change their situation because they still have like financial issues. Even if they talk to someone about it, they'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going through this thing in my uh, life right now. 
But then for them to share that information does not actually help them to change their situation. And so they will refrain from kind of like telling other people their problems just because they're like, I would rather handle it myself. Even if I tell you, it doesn't change the outcome, right? It's not like you can give me $500 just out of the goodness of your heart because they're rooted in, um, they're very realistic about, about life, right? They're like, you know, it's my problem. I have to deal with it. I can't depend on other people to like solve my problems for me. I got to do it myself to learn like, you know, responsibility and taking care of my family because it's my family, right? It's my decisions. And so they have this like kind of sense of like responsibility to the point that they will just take things on everything by themselves um, and not really want to mention what they're going through or include others into their problems. They will hide using their emotions. So for example, they may lash out at you suddenly about something, but in reality, it's a projection of their own internal feelings, which is related to them, you know, take trying to take everything on. And so they're kind of like get overwhelmed and all of a sudden they might just lash out at you for something which is like completely like, you know, ca catches you by surprise and you're just like, well, where did this come from, right? Like, I didn't do anything to like offend you, but then all of a sudden you're like angry at me for something, you know, because basically the ISFJ is feeling a lot of internal conflict with their emotions when they do that because emotions... Um, you can't hide them forever, right? So the ISFJ will like to push emotions down, similar to INFJs, whereas ISFJs will push their emotions down and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until eventually they can't push anymore and then it like all comes out like, you know, a volcano. It all like just boils out. The only difference that I notice is that ISFJs, when they do explode, it's... The more mature ones, when they explode, it's like not as severe. So like, they'll maintain their composure again. Whereas, like, someone who's angry, they may go on, like, a tantrum for, like, an hour or two. Whereas the ISFJ, if they throw a tantrum, it'll last for, like, an instant. And then after that, they'll, like, stop, and then they'll maintain their composure. Uh, which is really interesting to me, because, in my opinion, right, it would be better for the ISFJ to just get all the emotional conflict that they're feeling out into the open and share it's almost as though like ISFJs are afraid to admit that they are feeling a certain way, not to the people around them, but to themselves. So if they say it out loud, it's like, oh no, this is actually what I'm going through. And these are all the things that I've been trying to like, I wouldn't say run away from, but like not admit to myself. Because for me to do that, it's like my pride is at stake, right? So ISFJs, I guess, have a lot of pride on like their own emotional responsibility. And so for them to kind of like admit that they are going through emotional hardship, which is considered normal because everyone goes through emotional hardship but then for ISFJs to admit that they're going through emotional hardship is very difficult for them it's, I think it has to do with like pride or the way that they uh, they grew up some kind of trauma from their, their childhood so one example in terms of how you can tell if someone is an ISFJ is uh, they may all of a sudden start being cold to you they may you know cr criticize you for your actions whereas up until a certain point they're very warm and friendly and this comes from them hiding how they actually feel about a certain situation. And so they won't really criticize you, but they'll give you advice that is kind of unwarranted. Uh, we'll go into more deeper examples on this later. Um, and so as a, as a result, because they're able to hide their emotions behind this like mask, it allows them to be one of the best players when it comes to using deception and slowly rising in power and status, because you never actually know what an ISFJ is thinking or feeling because they can conceal it behind like this mask really well. Um, something that especially triggers ISFJs are people that push their agenda onto others. Uh, so like, such as being taken advantage of or like whether that's with others or with themselves. So for example, once I was in a rush to get to class, right? This back when I was in school and I was with my ISFJ friend. I had like five minutes I had like five minutes basically to walk across the entire campus and get to class. Um, and then on the way, there were some people that were very insistent that I should help them with their survey. It was just like a three question survey, but like, because I was in a rush, I was like, I just basically said, you know, like, no, thank you. I got to go. But then they were very insistent on saying like, oh, you know, this survey will only take two minutes of your time. It's only three questions. It's like, it's something that will, like, benefit, like, people if you, like, answer my survey, you know, like, stuff like that, right? They're basically imposing on your boundaries, even though I have explicitly already told them that I was 
you know, in Russia and had to go somewhere. Like, I don't, I don't have time to take your survey. Like, find someone else to take your survey. My ISFJ friend basically got really, like, agitated in that moment because he, because to me, because to him, it's just like, you know, my friend is trying to get to somewhere important, right? Like, and he has already stated that he does not want to take your survey. So why are you, like, pushing your agenda onto him, right? So he stuck up for me and was very assertive in, like, telling them that he specific, specifically said he's in Russia and doesn't want to take your survey. The best thing you could do is respect his wishes and find someone else, right? So for an ISFJ, if people, like, overstep their boundaries, they get very, like, offended by that. Um, I think this boils down to, like, ISFJs, they don't like to see people being bullied or taken advantage of. Again, maybe because in the past they experienced the same thing uh, because they didn't speak up or something. Uh, oh, yeah. So moving on to the unwarranted advice part. So ISFJs like to give advice that benefits people but may not necessarily be applicable. So for example, they might be like, you should go for out for a walk every day because the sun is good for you, right? Or they'll be like, you know, you should drink uh, more water at least eight cups a day because it's good for you. So they'll, they'll give you like advice that's like good for you, but at the same time, you're kind of wondering like, where is this advice coming from, right? I did not ask for it. And it's like, out of context in terms of like what we're talking about. Speaking of water, I'm going to take a Yeah, it's kind of like unwarranted in the sense that like you could be talking about, let's say, I don't know, the molecules that make up hydrogen atoms in water, right? And then all of a sudden they will go into this tangent that's saying like, you know, drinking water is good for you. I heard it has a lot of health benefits. And you're kind of like, that is good advice, and I appreciate you looking out for me, but at the same time, it's like, where did this come from? So they'll, like, kind of do that um, in conversation when they're talking to other people. Uh, they like to help people through what I call, like, soft influence. So they don't command you to do it. They don't force you to do it. But will mention things that you could improve on to help you become a better person, right? So, for example, drinking more water or, you know, you should work out three times a week. It's a good idea. You should at least try to do that because, you know, it's good for your health. So they'll say, like, things around that kind of, like, aspect. Um, ISFJs can be stubborn, which is the S and the J in their name, which translates basically to tenacity and not giving up on a task until it's completed. So ISFJs are very good at uh, not giving up. So, like, if they're facing hardship, they will just bash their head against the problem until the problem basically solves itself. And so... Uh, they're very tenacious in like being able to not quit until an issue is resolved, which can sometimes be a problem because for an ISFJ, um, because it's, it makes more sense. Like for example, if you run into a problem that you don't know how to solve, sometimes the best situate solution is to simply take a break and step away from that problem. But then the ISFJ will be like, no, I will not take a break. I'll not step away from this problem. I just need to work harder at it. And eventually the answer will come to me. Right? So, they have that kind of like perspective of stubbornness when it comes to solving issues, which which in some cases can be detrimental because when they're in a stressed out state, they're not going to be able to think of the best solution to the problem. So they may be able to think of a solution to the problem, but it's not the best solution. And then as a result, later on down the line, they may have to deal with uh, the repercussions of choosing to use a certain solution Whereas if they had simply waited and been more patient and be like, okay, I can't solve this problem today. I'll try solving it tomorrow or next week or next month. If they just wait, then sometimes the answers will just like come up by themselves and they don't have to deal with it. They are also, ISFJs are also very peculiar when it comes to like boundaries or personal space in terms of a physical sense. And so not just like their, you know, imaginary boundaries in terms of socials. So for example, if there are objects in their path, like if there are objects in the path, right? So, like, if they're, like, walking uh, on a path and there's, like, things that are, like, hindering them from walking in a straight line, they get very irritated by it, such as, like, a chair that they have to walk around to, like, get to the bathroom or kitchen. They would... They, they feel this, this, like, impulse to, like, put the chair in its proper place so that it's not in their way. So, like, if it... So, like, ISFJ might believe that chairs belong um, at a dining table, right? Tucked in. And so if the chair is not tucked in properly, it's just like, you know, sticking out. 
then they will feel like this impulsive urge to like push it in and put it in its right place. Which is, I find this also interesting with ESFJs as well. They seem to have this. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just like they feel this need to always organize everything around them. And so if things aren't organized, then they get frazzled. Uh, they also feel this way of like having to always organize things uh, about events in life that aren't straightforward forward, or about things that can trigger them to panic or things that can like trigger them to feel panic or experience anxiety. So I think they have this impulse to like organize their world because for things to be out of place or for some, or for like situations to pop up that they haven't um, planned or thought about, it brings them a lot of like fear and anxiety, which they like have very difficult, they have a very difficult time um, feeling. So for example, uh, this is the same ISFJ friend that had one time we were taking the sky train, right? But there's two trains. So basically, there's one that goes north and there's one that goes south, right? But it's on the same track. So we wanted the one that goes south. And normally we check beforehand um, on the SkyTrain like dashboard to check the train when it comes, like which one is it, which way is it going, right? Is it going south or is it going north? But because we were in a deep conversation about something, we were like laughing our ass off about something. So the first train that came, we just got on it. We didn't really check whether it's going south or north. And it wasn't until the train started moving that I realized that we forgot to check. And so I asked him, like, wait, where does this train go? And then in that moment, he looks at me with, like, these extremely wide eyes. As a, It's, like, a super serious issue, right? Like, it's life or death, but it's not a super serious issue because, like, well, if we took the wrong train, we can always just get off at the next stop and get on, you know, the next train that comes, right? Because of... But then to him, it's just like, oh, my God, we just, like, made a horrible, like, mistake. Like, our life is on the line um, because we got on the wrong sky train. Um, we checked and figured out that the train was actually the right one, but it was funny to see his expression. So basically, like, the ISFJ in that moment, their mask, like, broke, and then all their, like, fear and panic and anxiety just, like, poured out. So I think that ISFJs, alongside ESFJs, they suffer from, like, fear and panic, anxiety and worry. And so I think that's why they, like, try to keep everything inside them because they don't want others to feel the same way that they feel, which is, like, they're prone to, like, worrying about things, basically. Um, moving on. Uh, ISFJs tend to have very weird sleep schedules, from what I know. So, like, for example, most people might work uh, from 9 to 5, and so they wake up at, like, a certain time, I don't know, was it 6 a.m., 8 a.m.? Whereas ISFJs, their schedule is, like, they might work from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., and so they'll wake up in, like, the afternoon. Or they'll wake up at, like, 3 p.m. or 6 p.m. So they'll wake up... So their sleep schedule is kind of, like messed up, right? It doesn't fit with the normal sleep schedule that people usually have in society. Um, that's an interesting thing that I notice with a lot of ISFJs. Uh, they can also be prone to running away from problems that cause severe internal conflict. So, like, again, we're related to, like, worry, anxiety, fear. Uh, so they might run away from these problems rather than look within themselves and see what the real issue is, right? So because they're S-types, they don't look within to see the conflict that they're experiencing in their heart or trauma from the past that may be influencing their actions or behaviors in the present. Um, and as a result, they just kind of live in the present moment. And as a result, because they don't do the internal work of like looking at their past or looking at, you know, problems that happened um, in the past, they, they kind of get, like, triggered over and over and over in their lifetime until they finally decide to stop running from their own demons. So, ISFJs, I guess this boils down to, like, forgiveness in a way. So, like, ISFJs are very forgiving. And so, if you hurt them in the past, they will kind of just be like, oh, bygones are bygones, just let it go. Like, it's not a big deal to me. But then this forgiving nature can also be a bad thing because if they have certain traumas that they haven't dealt with, then they'll just be like, oh, that was a bad event, uh, let's let it go. But then this event will keep happening over and over in their lifetime and keep triggering them because they didn't look at the past and deal with it in the moment, right? They didn't, they didn't like, ask themselves, like, okay, why am I feeling this way, right? They just said, oh, that was a bad situation, uh, throw it out the window, live in the present, next, like, you know, whatever comes next. But then the problem with this kind of, like, approach is that if you don't analyze what is triggering you, if you don't analyze what is making you upset, then it's going to keep coming up over and over. 
so then the ISFJ, instead of trying to do the internal work and deal with it, they might just kind of ignore it and throw it into the past and be like, that was in the past, so it doesn't matter, right? So like, and as a result, they have they might have to like come across the same uh, problems over and over in their life until they, you know, mature and say like, okay, I got to stop running for my problems. I got to actually face them. This isn't just like a, oh, this is from the past thing. It's a, this is like a thing that keeps popping up in my life and I have to deal with it like, like an adult. Uh, yeah. So moving on to the physical traits, um, it's very hard for me to describe in ISFJ in terms of words. So I'll just use pictures and kind of explain it to you. Uh, so when you see an ISFJ, basically the word I would use is like underrated. So it's very easy to like misjudge an ISFJ for what they can do. Uh, in reality, they hide their true potential behind their like this like mask of like kindness, and it makes it really easy to misjudge them and and what they can do. Right. So for example, if you see a rock, right you're not going to be threatened by a rock, right? You're just going to be like, oh, that's a rock, you know, it doesn't move, it can't hurt me. Which is kind of like what an ISFJ is like, right? They just like, they exist, and then they don't really pose a threat, or you don't perceive them as a threat, but in reality, they hide this potential, they are actually quite dangerous if they want to be. Um, and it's very easy to misjudge them, and just label them as the underdog or like victim. Because of the way they act and the way that they're able to like put on this mask. So their ISFJs are like a snake with no teeth. So you perceive it as harmless, but little did you know it's a king cobra and can actually spit venom at you, right? So that's kind of like how I would describe an ISFJ. Um, I'm going to start putting up physical examples to uh, kind of explain this concept better. So a good example of an ISFJ is like Jackie Chan, right? And so I'll put up a picture. So basically by examining his features, you can kind of see what an ISFJ would look like. But then I want you to notice something, which is the way he smiles, right? So if you pay attention to his eyes and his smile, you'll notice that the ISFJ is doing everything correctly in terms of how to smile, right? They're, they have like, you know, crow's feet around their eyes and they're smiling, you know, their smile is noticeable. But you need to realize that at the same time, it's also very fake. It's like a mask, right? So the person is smiling and doing everything correctly. But at the same time, you can kind of sense that like that smile is not real. And uh, compare that to like someone like Mr. Bean, for example, right? So in this image, you notice Mr. Bean's smile is very, there's a lot more emotion behind it, right? It's a lot more open. It's a lot more, you know, silly and goofy, which is what a smile should be like, right? A smile should not be under control, which is kind of like what an ISFJ does in terms of how they um, express emotions. So comparing these two images, Mr. Bean versus Jackie Chan, uh, Mr. Bean's smile, you can tell that it's like more real, more genuine, whereas with the ISFJ smile, aka Jackie Chan smile, it's, it is a smile, but it's also fake. I don't know if you can like tell, but you can you can kind of tell by just looking, right? It's like, not real. It's like, I am smiling, but at the same time, I'm using this to judge you. It's almost like I'm using my smile as a weapon to conceal how I really feel or think about you. And by smiling, I will see what kind of expression or response you will elicit. And from there, I'll be able to like make a better decision as to what kind of person you are. Uh, I think another good example of like an ISFJ is the Prime Minister of China. So for example, you look at him, he is smiling, so it's very similar, he is smiling, but at the same time you can tell it's fake, right? He's smiling, but he's not actually happy, he's not actually genuine about his intentions, it's just like a polite thing. I think it boils down to um, ISFJs want to put on the best uh, face that they possibly can, so like they want their outward appearance to put others at ease. And so they will do everything correctly in terms of like smiling and like traditional values and like how to behave. But in terms of whether or not they are behaving that way because they actually have genuine interests. It's like, for example, they will smile, 
because it is socially acceptable to do so. They're not smiling because they're actually happy. I think that describes an ISFJ really well. So they will like do things to they will do things they they put a high um, amount of priority on social acceptance and if people deviate from that then they tend to get very annoyed or irritated i think this has to do with like traditional values right so yeah keep that in mind when you're like looking at his eye subject so yeah i think that's it for this video uh as always i hope you got a lot of value out of this uh, please make sure to like and subscribe if you did for more future content and as always i will see you next time peace out Hey you guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to join our Discord community. The link is in the description where I'm looking forward to having meaningful discussions with you and the other members in the Celestial Sage community. Also, if you'd like this INFJ to act as your personal one-on-one -on -one counselor to help you overcome any conflicts or traumas in your life and become the best version of yourself that you possibly can be, just DM me the word Sage on Discord and we'll take it from there. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the Discord and peace out.